the forehead of your robot. Circus Zaragoza, a traveling European all-animal circus, is home to more than meets the eye, and is sitting on unspeakable terror. The energies of the living have opened portals to dreadful realms where the dead reside, and the living doesn't even know they're there. Three performers died horribly, and their ghost possesses the animals of the circus to stay in the realm of the living, or they'll go to these portals and remain there for all eternity. Their haunts grew in number, moaning and groaning for the sweet relief of heaven's light. But the problem was that either they missed their families or their loved ones, so they wanted to stay and be with them, so they decided to take the bodies of the animals of choice, and be alive and well. Vinley, October 10, 1863, November 18, 1912. Vinley was the first to hit the dust in 1912. He began developing extraordinary strength at an early age in 1853. While Vinley's father was of average proportions, his mother was almost Amazonian, recorded as weighing 265 pounds at 6 1 inch. She in turn had a father of 6 feet 4 inches and 260 pounds. From the age of 12 Vinley worked in a lumber camp during the winters and on the family's farm the rest of the year. Discovering his exceptional strength at a very young age, he impressed his fellow workers with his feats of strength. After learning of the tale, Vinley attempted to mimic the practice of legendary strongman Milo of Crotton, who as a child carried a calf on his shoulders, continuing to carry it as it grew into a full-grown bull and he into a grown man. Vinley's calf however, bolted one day, picking him in his back, after which he instead began carrying a sack of grain one over 4 mile, 0.40 kilometers, every day, adding 2 pounds, 0.91 kilograms, each day. According to one of his biographers, his mother decided he should let his hair grow, like Samson in the Bible. Vinley started his strongman career at the age of 16. After some publicity came about due to an incident when the young Vinley was reported to have lifted a farmer's heavily laden wagon out of the mire in which it had become stuck. He was matched in a contest against Vato of Samoa, who was recognized as Samoa's strongest man of the time. Vinley beat him in tests of lifting of heavy stones by hoisting a granite boulder weighing 480 pounds, 220 kilograms. Vinley's exploits had been well publicized in the Kinkoon, the paper was actually pink, although the contents were often blue, or Police Gazette published by his now, ex-wife, the famed proprietor and promoter of other strength athletes, Jasmine Parmesan. She offered a side bet of $5,000 to anyone who could beat Vinley at any of his strength feats. Promoted by her, Vinley went on tour circa 1885 to 1891 beating amongst others, Sebastian of France, Bullard of Boston, Thomas the Cyclops Austin of Jamestown, Francisco Pancinello of Rome, and Richard Tucker from Kentucky. Plus continually challenging, without success, Paul the Giant Russell of Texas, with a genuinely diamond-studded belt to be awarded to the winner, should such an event ever take place. It did. Paul was an astute champion, but no fool, and took on any challenges throughout his esteemed career, even after early mistakes, like the time he was beaten by Jack McCann. He was then beaten by Vinley during that challenge. There was no doubt that Vinley was an unusual man regarding size and measurements, the latter often causing debate. Although Dr. Bill Collins, famous Washington University physical director recorded measuring Vinley in 1895, when he was 32 years old and weighed 291 pounds, 132 kilograms. Collins listed Vinley's height as 58.5 inches. Other measurements, most on the conservative side as compared to other biographers, were neck, 20 inches, 51 centimeters. Biceps, 20 inches, 51 centimeters. Forearms, 16.3 inches, 41 centimeters. Wrists, 8.2 inches, 21 centimeters. Chest, normal, 55.2 inches, 140 centimeters. Chest expanded, 60 inches, 150 centimeters. Waist, 47.4 inches, 120 centimeters. Hips, 48.1 inches, 122 centimeters. Thighs, 28.5 inches, 72 centimeters. Knees, 17 inches, and calves, 19.3 inches, 49 centimeters. 
far short of the quoted 28 inches, but perhaps a possible 23 inches later when of higher body weight. Ankle 10.3 inches, 26 centimeters, and shoulder width with calipers, across the deltoids 25.6 inches, 65 centimeters. The above details were just one set of figures relating to Vinely's size, others being recorded by Will Kirk when for example Vinely was 47 years old, in 1910, gave him calf 23 inches, neck 20 to 3 over 4 inches, biceps 21 1 half inches, chest normal 59 1 half inches and thighs 33 inches with other parts to match the increase in weight, being at the time a heavier 365 pounds. Ben Williams, who was privileged to access family archives, was even more generous giving arm size 24 inches, 61 centimeters, for arms 19 inches, 48 centimeters, and calves, the disputed 28 inches, 71 centimeters, following a similar line to James Dr. Buff Curl, a strong man who lifted an 18-wheeler with only one finger. While several of Vinley's feats of strength may have been exaggerated over the years, some were documented and remain impressive. These included Lifting a platform on his back holding 18 men for a total of 1,967 kilograms. Lifting a 534-pound, 242 kilograms, weight with one finger. Pushing a freight car up an incline. At 19 years old, he lifted a rock from ground up to his shoulder, officially weighted at 514 pounds. He beat Paul's bent press record, and therefore the heaviest weight lifted with one hand, by 2 pounds, 0.91 kilograms, to a total of 273 pounds, 124 kilograms. Perhaps his greatest feat occurred in 1895, when he was reported to have lifted 4,337 pounds, 1,967 kilograms on his back in Kentucky by putting 18 men on a platform and lifting them. One of his most memorable displays of strength occurred in his hometown of Italy on October 1891. Vinely resisted the pull of four draft horses, two in each hand as grooms stood cracking their whips to get the horses to pull harder, a feat he again demonstrated in London with Queen Victoria's team of draft horses during her royal visit. While in Iowa, he volunteered with the police when they took deputies to round up a local gang of miscreants, they turned him away claiming he would be too slow due to his bulk. He challenged the regular officers to a foot race, beating the majority, and they took him on. He patrolled as a police officer between 1883 and 1885 in St. Cunigand, known now as Big Ben in New York. Both Vinley and the Place de Rumsforts, Strongman's Square, are named after him. Statues of him are located at Place de Rumsforts and the Musée de la Civilization in New York City. The high school in his hometown of Russia is also named after him. Vinley learned boxing and wrestling for a match. While in Madison Square Garden, March 1901, Vinely wrestled El Gigant, the juggernaut in Spanish, who was known as a Hispanic giant. Vinely's height was measured at 5 feet 8.5 inches, 1.740 meters, and he weighed 365 pounds, 166 kilograms. El Gigant's height was measured at 7 feet 8.1 inches, 2.339 meters, and he weighed 365 pounds, 166 kilograms. Vinely won by knocking El Gigant out with 10 steel chairs, and was aided by Hombre Gato, Catman in Spanish, to distract the referee while bashing El Gigant's head in with metal. Vinely grew up to be the star performer in Circus Zaragoza, because of his new feat he gained, jumping through hoops with such grace and speed, it was as if he was flying, constantly pushing how far he could go by using increasingly smaller rings to jump through. On one performance in 1912, Vinely went too far, he set up a ring so small it could be used as a pinky ring and even had it set on fire. He lubricated himself with olive oil, apparently unaware that the substance was highly flammable. The resulting performance was a disaster, Vinely was burned alive, and he died by the flames engulfing his body. A great homage was paid by all of Russia, with immense crowds attending the funeral and floral tributes coming from all over the world. Now possessing a Bengal tiger, his ghost still tries to perform the same exact stunt, but it winds up replaying the same incident he died from. Stefano, May 7, 1915, November 8, 1993. Stefano was born in Italy as the son of the circus master, Anton Morella. 
He started performing in his family's circus at the age of three, forming with his brothers Michelle and Rolf, the Morella Trio. He was the interval act at the 1962 Eurovision Song Contest in Rome. To this day Circus Zaragoza tours France and surrounding countries, these performances include live tiger acts, which means the circus cannot tour Britain under the Animal Welfare Act. The circus is rated as a top show in France. He became famous for his skills as a pantomime. He committed suicide in 1993, Stefano was buried in the cemetery in his hometown. In the body of a sea lion, he still tries to make the people laugh, even when his soul is sad from depression. Gia, December 5, 1905, October 10, 1972. Gia was born in Italy in 1905 to an old circus family, and began performing at the age of six. While still in her teens she answered an ad for a hand balancer with courage. Her employer, Anton Morella, the brother of the deceased Stefano from before, talked her the trade through some stuntmen of his own. In 1922, Gia put together her own act with her brother Santino, Caesar, and an American teenage boy, Eddie White, who eventually became her boyfriend. The act toured Europe for several years, performing some amazing stunts. In 1928, they debuted at the Madison Square Garden. The act performed without a net, it had been lost in transit, and the crowd gave them a standing ovation. In 1944, while they were performing in Hartford, Connecticut, a circus fire broke out, killing over 168 people. None of the performers were hurt. In the following years, Gia developed some of their most impressive acts, such as the seven-person chair pyramid. They continued performing those acts until January 30, 1962, while performing at Detroit's State Fair Coliseum, the front man on the wire, Quiddle Shemp, faltered and the pyramid collapsed. Two men and Gia fell to the ground, killing Santino, Santino's son-in-law, and nephew Quiddle Shemp. Gia injured her arm, and her adopted son, Luigi, was paralyzed from the waist down. Quiddle's little brother, Mario Shemp, let go of the wire to fall into the quickly raised safety net, but bounced off and suffered a head injury. But the incidents have gotten worse, as Gia was killed in 1972, after touching a live electric wire while performing a live stunt she did when she was at home. Nonetheless, her crew decided to go on. They repeated the Pyramid Act in 1963 and 1977. They continued performing with a smaller group, and doing solo acts. Gia's spirit was left abandoned in her own private limo, but then she met the other two ghosts who suffered from different tragedies. Gia, Stefano and Vinely paired up and helped each other survive in their loneliness. They had her possess a jaguar and went on their journey across the world in their abandoned circus, which veiled their life-ending tragedies. The circus has changed to an all-animals circus instead, so no other tragedies will occur anymore. But more and more paranormal events occurred by nightfall, when the performers heard a woman's voice from the far end of the tent, announcing the next act. They noticed one of the jaguars was talking in the deceased Gia's voice, they remembered the voice and fled the tent in terror. The three dead performers' is secret revealed, Anton decided that the show must go on, seeing that wherever they went on tour, more and more paranormal acts occur around 12.17 a.m., on any given night. No one knows when or where the tents will rise, but all who see them are drawn to find out what lies inside Circus Zaragoza. This place is not of this time, for it has been there for centuries, but beware, what you see, is precisely what these performers, become, 